I like big books and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a big book in her face. See what I did there? Hey sunshines and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about all things books. Let's talk about books, baby. Let's talk about you and me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when spring hits, the time changes, the sun comes out and it's a little warmer. This reading monster inside of me just awakens. I don't read a lot during the fall and winter. I feel like I'm more busy, but if I lay down to read a book and I cover up under the covers, I just fall asleep. So I love going out on my back deck and just taking a book and listening to the birds and reading. So I have a ton of books here, a couple of book reviews that I wanna share with you. And I hope that you like this style of video. I don't do them very often. I know they're not gonna be for everyone, but if you love to read, I definitely hope you'll stick around. If you're new, my name is Christy and welcome. Please consider hitting that subscription button and giving this video a thumbs up to all my Sunshine Squad. I am so happy you're here. All right, so I did post on Instagram and Facebook a couple of weeks ago asking what your favorite books were because I was heading to the library and wanted to pick some things up and needed some, some suggestions. Unfortunately, I went with a list of your suggestions and the library did not have a lot of what I wanted. So I did put a couple of things on hold. I put The Storyteller's Secret on hold and I also put... I think it's called Next Year in Havana, which was one of Reese Witherspoon's book club book picks. I will list all the books below that I talk about um, with the author. So don't worry if I'm moving a little too fast for you to write everything down. So I grabbed both of those. And then as I get those off the waiting list, I will add some more on so I can keep cycling through. But since they didn't have any of the books I was looking for, I just decided I was going to sort of roam through the library and pick up like four books that I thought looked interesting. So I did pick up um, two books by Jane Green. I haven't read Jane Green's books in a long time. So she had several that I had not read. So the first one is, this one's called The Beach House. And the next one is called The Sunshine Sisters, which doesn't that sound like a perfect like Georgia Sunshine Book Club book to read? Anyway, I like to read in the spring and summer a lot of just for pleasure, a lot of really lightweight reading. There is gonna be a business book, some personal development type things in this um, sort of book video that I do, but a lot of these are just gonna be simple, easy, fun, reads. So I hope you enjoy that. The next one I picked up was by Dorothe Dorothea Benton Frank. I could be saying that name wrong. Dor Dorothea. Anyway, this is called All Summer Long. That looked really cute. And then I picked up, um, actually I saw these on the shelves. These are the Miss Julia books. I think I've talked about these on my channel before. So the very first one is Miss Julia Speaks Her Mind. This came out in 1990. So these books are a tiny bit dated. I love them. I read the first four or five and now there's probably at least 10 of them. These are just really, really sweet, very clean stories. So if you're looking for something like that, you probably will love Miss Julia. So Miss Julia is married in, um, to sort of the pillar of society. She has the perfect house. They have this beautiful mansion. Um, she's a Christian woman. She's very, um, set in her ways and um but she works volunteers and is very charitable and her husband dies all of a sudden and up comes this woman and her little son to the front door and it is her husband's mistress and his son rocks miss julia's world because you remember she's very prim and proper so these books are all about miss julia sort of um living her life after her husband's death and finding her way and they are hysterical and heartwarming and easy super easy reads i could only find the third book and on in the library so the first one is miss julia speaks her mind i had some credit at the used bookstore because i take my books back and sell them and then miss julia takes over those are the first two and then the third one is Miss Julia Throws a Wedding. I will probably read these like in a day or a day and a half like each. So I grabbed the first three of those, but I think you will love those stories if you just keep in mind that they are a tiny bit dated. All right, now I'm gonna switch for a minute and talk about two books that I've read lately that I really liked, and then I'll show you some other books that are on my book list. So the first one is called Stags. Now this is a young adult 
um, book. So it's not in the fiction section. It's actually in the teen section. But I saw Elle Fowler. If you um, ever watch her channel, she has a channel called Elle's Glitter Gossip. It's, she's not on there very often. Her main channel um, is just Elle Fowler and she does lifestyle videos. But she used to do pretty actively these Elle's Glitteratures and she would review books. And she did one not too um, long ago on this book. And she said, I was looking through um, my Kindle trying to find a book to read and when this one popped up it says Gossip Girls mixed with The Hunger Games and as soon as she said that I was like I'm getting that book <laughs> and as soon as she read that she thought the same thing. I think that there are some really great teen books out there. I loved all the Divergent and Hunger Games books so um, I know not everybody might like this type of book but it was really easy. I read it like a day and a half and she said she read it like in one whole night. So basically um, this girl gets accepted into this very, very prestigious school. I mean, it started in the 1500s. It's older than most everything in England. It's very prim and proper, very high end, very expensive, but she got in on a scholarship, which is only like one person a year or something. And her dad, her mom left when she was like 18 months old or something. And her dad is a wildlife photographer, pretty famous, but he can't travel the way he needs to for his job because his daughter was always there. They have a really great relationship. So it worked out for her to get into this really pre prestigious school. It's like, this stands for something saint, Agnes, I can't remember. Anyway, this stands for like the school. So she is very lonely at the school. She's in a whole different world. The families that go to this school have been prestigious families since the Crusades. I mean, they have had their money that long. They're steeped in tradition. This school is very formal. They call all the teachers friars and then there are six kids that kind of rule the school and they call them the medievals and they don't use social media they don't use phones they don't use technology all of that is considered savage so everybody wants to be a medieval you want these families really want to keep the old traditions alive they don't really like the modern twist the world is having and so nobody really in the school uses social media or even cell phones or anything like that. So she's kind of thrust into this world and doesn't know a lot of people. Not a lot of people are nice to her. And at the end of the first semester, she gets an invitation with two other students that aren't super popular um, to go to the head medieval, his name is Henry's house, which is about an hour and a half away, to go hunting, shooting, and fishing. That's what the invitation says, hunting, shooting, and fishing with an N. Um, and she's so excited. People around her, her roommate wouldn't talk to her. Her roommate acted like she was jealous that she was going to get to go and her roommate didn't. And they sent, there's within the medieval, so six kids that sort of rule the school, there are three boys and three girls. So one of the medieval girls actually shows up at her door to help her pack. And she's like, I don't have the right stuff to do this. She's like, don't worry. They're going to have evening gowns for you for dinners and all the clothes that you need. Just bring your basics. So she sets off to go to this weekend with the popular kids. And when she gets to the house, the shiz hits the fan and things start getting real. Now, if you want to see what happens in this book, I didn't watch Elle's entire, I am on a chair that's kind of squeaky. So if you hear sounds, I'm not tooting. Um, sorry, not trying to be gross. Um, so if you want to hear the whole synopsis of this book, I will let you go over to her channel. I'll link it below. I did not listen to her entire um, book review because I don't like to have spoilers. So I'm not going to give you spoilers anyway. I thought this book could be better. I thought it could be a little more suspenseful, but I thought it was really good. So that's one I read. The second one I read just recently was The Woman in Cabin 10. Um, is it The Girl in Cabin 10? I think it's The Woman. The Woman in Cabin 10. So I tried to read this this fall and could not get into it. I don't know what happened. And then we went on a hockey weekend back in February and I read the entire book in like a day and a half. I don't know what was happening in the fall that I couldn't get into it because it's so good. So basically this girl, she's young or mid twenties maybe, she is out partying with her friends. So you don't really hear that. She comes home, she's a little drunk. Um, and she wakes up in the middle of the night to hear that somebody is in her house. She goes to the door of her bedroom to shut it and lock it. And the man is there in his full like stocking cap and his gloves that are like taped 
so he can leave no evidence and he actually shuts the door in her face and locks it and it kind of gives her a bloody eye um, it takes her several hours to get out and the police come she's very shaken up um, she's trying to get her life together because at the same time in just a day and a half she leaves for this really prestigious work event she works for a travel magazine her boss takes all the good perks but her boss is pregnant and is not handling pregnancy very well so she's going to get to go on this luxury cruise line it only holds like about it only has maybe 10 cabins i think only 10. very prestigious very elite and she's going to get to write a story about this ship so in the midst of her having to deal with this burglary and the police and figuring out a new cell phone and money she has a fight with her boyfriend she's not sleeping she's drinking more in order to try and sleep because she can't sleep because she can't get the image of the intruder out of her house she goes on this trip and in the middle of the night some things happen before this she hears a splash outside in the water and is pretty darn sure that somebody has been thrown overboard to be murdered nobody believes her her ex-boyfriend is on the ship um, nobody believes what she's going on what's going on they know she's not sleeping she'd been drinking a lot and so that is sort of the book I did not expect it to take the turn that it did I thought it was very good and easy easy to read again I will link that book below with the author so those are two books if you're looking for something to read and have it that you might enjoy now I do have some other books that I picked up the unsuitable for ladies an anthology of women's travelers look at the cover of this first of all so these are ladies that lived in a much earlier times when women were not expected to travel. It says every page of this book pulses with adventure. It's totally exhilarating to hear the authentic voices of women brave enough to defy convention and tackle the globe. Real ladies do not travel or so it was once said. This collection of intrepid travel dispels that myth with amazing, amusing and thrilling extracts that prove that there are a few corners of the world that lady travelers have not visited. So these are like excerpts from journals of women that have traveled around the world and kind of divide, defied convention. I love the cover of this lady in her like safari outfit on top of the zebra. I'm anxious to read that. I think it'll be really interesting. I still have not read, read this one, which is Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. I don't know why I haven't read it. I got this from Yvette Niesel in one of our box swaps. And I love, I love Leanne Moriarty books. I just haven't had time to read it. So this one is going to go kind of to the top of my list. I, sh I think I've talked about this one before. Both of my kids have read The Giver. They want me to read it. And so I've got to get this one read. Another one. Now, this one is the opposite of the Miss Julia books. This is a The Governess Gone Rogue. This is a book that I got in my Bubbles and Books, I think, February box. And so I'm anxious to read that. I think it'll just be like an easy read um the next one the next two i've had for quite a while and i just haven't picked them up like i said i i'm hoping to get all of these read this month um it's the light we cannot see a lot of people have told me they were not able to get through this book so we'll see what happens with me and then a lot of people this is on a ton of people's top sort of video list and this is a gentleman in moscow so anxious to read that. There are two other books that I'm reading right now. Girl, Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis. That's sort of a personal book um, that I swear everybody probably has already read. I'm probably the last one to read it, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. It talks about just motivation and kind of self care and that kind of stuff. The last book that I just found in my Kindle, I was going through and sort of cleaning out my Kindle. I really like Kindle books, but I've decided that I'm going to move more to the library from now on because they're free. There are things in my life that I'm just wanting to save for travel and some house redo things and so i'm going to try and not purchase any more books a lot of these books were ones that i purchased in the past or like the giver i'd purchased because the kids needed it for school i think both kids use this copy anyway um but i found a book that just warmed my heart when i saw it it's a business book technically i saw this guy speak i don't know six or seven years ago his name is darren hardy i think he's like the editor or publisher of fortune magazine i don't remember all the details however he was such a good speaker that i was um wanting to get his book and i read it and loved it and i used his concept a lot in my life five or six years ago the book is called the compound effect and basically it's just taking 
doing little things every day to achieve where you want to be whether it's successful in business um, he uses it as an example for something in his marriage he gets in a fight with his with his wife over Thanksgiving which is his like favorite favorite time of year and so he decides that every day for a year he's going to write something every day about his wife that he loves from that day and then the next year he gave it to her as a gift so he took little steps every day and it changed the way he thought about his wife because he noticed the good things about her and um, what a gift that could be so it doesn't have to be business that you're using this for it can be um, your personal life too but he starts out by giving the example I could have have this a little off but basically it is I could give you a million dollars today or I could give you a penny today and it doubles every day for 30 days which one would you choose the right answer is taking the penny because with it doubling every day for 30 days it becomes much more than that million dollars so I have to say with this concept in my head it's gotten me off the couch a few days or days when I'm like oh I don't know I compare myself to others or I'm frustrated and I think compound effect. I think you need to do that one little thing a day that gets you a little further than you were today and makes you more successful. And so I have really been applying that the past couple of weeks and it's been working for me. So again, doesn't have to be a business book, could be personal, but I really, really, really liked that book and thought he had great examples of ways to sort of move you forward if you're in a rut or again, and I'm gonna use mine toward business, but I've also used it for a few things in my personal life. So those are the books. Oh, I did have one more. Here it is. Oh, I have two more actually. <laughs> this one is The Life-Changing uh, Magic of Tidying Up. This is the Marie Kondo book. I don't know what this says about me, but I bought it back in January and then I lost it for three months. So I found it again. I don't plan to Marie Kondo my house by any means, but I do hope I watched her series on Netflix and I'm hoping just to pick up some great little tips. And then the last one is, this is a classic case of don't judge a book by its cover. I totally judge this book by its cover. So there's a section in Target, it's by the cards and it has like gift items in it, kind of quirky, fun gift items. They're a little bit more expensive a lot of times I'll find like interesting Easter basket stuffers or stocking stuffers. I was going through there late October of last year and that's kind of what I was looking for. And I came, I saw this book and totally, totally judged it. It's called Read This If You Want To Be Instagram Famous. See, you're judging it too. But it made me pick it up. I was like, let me see what this is. And it's such an interesting little read. So this book may not be for everybody, although I think everybody that takes a picture on their phone could definitely um, benefit from this. But if you are a person, like I do YouTube, and a way that I find people to work with on YouTube is through Instagram. They find me, they reach out to me. Um, but again, you could just be a lay person that just posts on Instagram or Facebook. This really breaks down how to use Instagram, how to use filters, how to photograph, how to you post, how to do all the interesting things that gets your posts shown just a little bit more. It's so much more than that though, you guys. I just can't even, I don't know. It really, really is such a good book. So I actually showed this book to my daughter like a couple weeks after I found it. I showed it to her and I'm like, I really want this book for Christmas. Don't judge me. And she was like, okay. I had totally forgotten about it. And then on Christmas morning, she had remembered that I wanted it. So she got this book for me. So if you're interested in just upping your Instagram presence or, um, I don't know, learning how to take better pictures. This book is really, really handy and I liked it a lot. It was like $12.99, wasn't very expensive. So that's my book reviews and books that I'm going to read. I hope that you will tell me below what books that you guys are reading because I think that helps us. I am trying to keep a list of things that you are liking to try and read in the future, but I may do these like videos like every other month. We will see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.